Hello everybody, this is Teddy here and we're going to do a quick run through of Engineer's Toolbox which is now in FTB Horizons and I believe it will be in the FTB Monster Pack also but this is a quick rundown for people that don't know what it's all about and what it does. It pretty much does everything in one block. You can these blocks are modular you can add modules to them, take modules off pretty much do anything you want and Get ready because here come the modules. Blam. There are a ton. There are redstone modules to do redstone logic. There are basic modules, item modules, fluid modules to move fluids and stuff around. There's energy modules. There's tanks. Every mod, every one of these sockets has tanks on it. Inside it in its own inventory. It has its own inventory. I believe there's three tanks and three inventories per module. Uh, we'll get into some of these later. Uh, right now we're going to look at basic basic stuff. The first thing you're going to need is a socket remote. Uh, it's a little pricey. Interpearl, a control circuit, and a blank module. Okay, Control circuit is made either with redstone and nuggets or redstone and copper ingots. And you get two per. Okay, so let's do this and you also need a blank module which is a little complicated glass die uh, red green and blue dyes glowstone dust and a machine chassis the machine chassis there's multiple ways to make it gold nuggets and aluminum gold nuggets and tin gold nuggets and iron copper and aluminum copper tin copper iron so there's multiple ways to do it and you get two for each one okay we're also going to need some sort of wrench. An engineer's wrench works best. Uh, it is made with three iron ingots and a button. So it's pretty cheap to make that. Uh, so let's look at some of the stuff. we got item inputs. Those are pretty easy. A trapdoor in one of those modules that you made. Uh, an item output, which is a trapdoor, a dropper, and a blank module. Okay. And this is pretty simple stuff. Uh, first thing you do you decide what side you want the stuff on you need to make this up somewhere else than where you're at unless you have a lot of room uh, and you just right click and it puts the module on there you'll see three bars red the green bar is inventory the red is redstone and I believe the purple is redstone latch circuit so now we've got an input okay so now let's put an output on that so let's put an output here Okay, and you got the same controls. Alright. So how you change this stuff is you use this remote. You hold shift, right click, and it changes its modes. It filters through a bunch of different modes. Okay. Green is for inventory. So right now you see I've just changed it to inventory one. Okay. So now if I take this off here, you shift, right click, take that off. Let me just uh, put a block here real quick so I can place this sucker down. Now you want to mouse over and see which one you got. You see it's got item output, item input. Set him down right there. Okay, so he's set up with this on inventory one. Okay. So if I sit this down, I use this wrench here, set that to extract. It's going to pull this dirt out and it's going to put it over here it's going to put it in inventory one or zero as Wayla calls it okay so well how do we get that out okay let's put another one here now for some reason these don't like to connect well although it should hmm I may have to use something other than item ducks Well, let's double check that. There we go. So you got to have the inventory set before you can even do that. Change that to output, and it sucks those out and goes over here. So that's the basic input outputs, okay? And if I put another output over here, let's change it to say that inventory right there. Set him down. Let's get this dirt back out of here. Put it back in here. Now let's change this to inventory one. Now it should go over this way. 
okay so basically you can have it go through many different ways this is just a real simple one uh, so let's break these off now there is another inventory module we just uh, if you just right click it'll pull that module off there okay now this one's called the item extractor let's break this chest now let's set this to inventory zero which would be this one right here put that down now if I put dirt in there now it's gonna extract straight out of this chest and go nowhere well hmm. there we go now you don't have to use pipes on the outputs it'll output to any inventory so if I just put a chest there it'll come right over here okay so that's that okay we're back and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a basic machine this is just a furnace okay uh, if we do look we got the furnace module this recipe is one of those PSUs which is made with lead ingots gold nuggets redstone or nether quartz gold nuggets and redstone or lead and copper and redstone or nether quartz copper and redstone so so you got that and also another module on here that's new is a machine output most of your machines will use a machine output for items uh, if you look at the recipe on it it's a topper a dispenser and a blank module It'll give you a machine output okay and they work just the same way so we're going to set this to inventory one okay or zero need to get used to that inventory zero the furnace is going to use inventory zero the machine output is going to in output on inventory one okay so let's see this in action shall we put that on there and I've got the item extractor over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a chest here now let's just get some stuff that can burn which is dust basically we can use dust or we can just use iron let's just use iron iron ore oh and one thing I forgot to mention is there is a energy input on the back and it's pretty cheap to make an energy input two copper and a blank module or two gold nuggets in a blank module you don't have to do anything special with those you can uh, let me just slap one on top here so you can see you can set it to turn on and off with redstone signal so it's not a big deal let's just right click take that off there I've got a leadstone energy cell these do run off RF okay so if we put this iron in here you see it's working you can see it's got 500 5,000 to 5,000 RF once it gets done cooking it should spit it out there it goes this inventory right here you can set that to inventory one or two it doesn't matter you can see here it's just cooking this does not double your ores or anything it just does that that's all it does okay So that's pretty interesting. I like that a lot. All right, let's just go ahead and yank these off here. Now there is stuff stuck in the inventory, so I can use a item output. Slap that on there. Slap that on there. We'll just pull all the rest of it out of there. There it all is. Okay. So, let me get set up for the next thing, and I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, we're back, and I just all I did was add a different module here and another. I put the furnace here. It's got an energy input on the back, just like on the other one. Item input on this side. Machine output over here. It's configured. Furnace using inventory zero, item input using inventory zero, machine output using inventory one. Same setup here with a grinder module on the front. Okay, so let's take this iron, put it in here. It should pump it through. And when this is done, 
it should toss it right over here there it goes so now be warned this grinder and uh, furnace setup I do not believe doubles your ores we'll find out here in a minute uh, we'll let that run through and then we'll double check it also it accepts RF that's the energy input with a redstone signal now I could use I believe it's called a multi Uh, yeah, multi input. Going to do fluid item and energy. Okay. So if I really, really wanted to conserve space and wiring, I could have a whole string of machines say, sharing the same power source. Just by set that there, then take this, take these off, and then using the multi modules, let's just grab two of those. Okay, blue is input, so if I really wanted to save it, space, I could do that. Right there. And it would handle item, fluid, and power. So you can just change that to input, output, however you want to do it, and all share the same stuff. So, that is that. Uh, and if you're really interested on what's inside your machine, you can get a crafting... Uh, not crafting inventory inventory interface okay and then just use your remote to see what's in there see there's 46 45 left if you come over here and slap one down on here you can see well it doesn't have nothing in it right now because it's converting it. Uh, it's using yeah this one's holding its inventory this one won't show you what it's got right now so because it's outputting it directly into this chest so it looks like it may double the ores hmm. interesting okay <clears throat> alright uh, let me get set up for the next thing I'm not going to go through this in detail right now. This is a quick starter guide for you guys that have never messed with it before. So we'll go from there. Uh, we won't get into power production or the redstone stuff right now. I'm just giving you the basics. Fold shift, it tells you exactly what it does. Uh, over it generates power when exposed to sunlight, tells you what it needs. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, tank interfaces show you what's in a tank. And like I said, everything is controlled by this remote. You'll shift click and you go through the different modes. Like blue mode is liquid, green is inventory, red is redstone, purple is the RS latch, white is special functions. Some of them use special functions. Uh, yellow and light blue I'm not sure on. Uh, I'll have to get with emasher and check on what those do but this is the basics of engineers toolbox uh, you can have power coming through here and going on that way you can have items coming here and then going up and you can have fluid coming in the bottom going out the side uh, it really doesn't matter these things are so modular it's ridiculous And we'll get into more advanced things later, but right now, this is the basics of it. Uh, there's way too much stuff to go through to get it all out in one video, so I will do another video on just the machines uh, in the next episode I do. Uh, this is just a quick, you know, briefing tutorial, basically. Yeah, it doubles your ores. Cool. Okay, so, uh, like I said, this is just a basic quick rundown of Engineer's Toolbox, what it does. Uh, it does add some world gen in Horizons, but it's from Emasher Resource, which is the, basically the core mod. You got algae, you get limestone, you get, uh, let's just look at Emasher real quick. 
So you get limestone, these, redstone, this is made. All this stuff is made. Uh, hemp, which can be turned into uh, no, not hemp block. This hemp. Yeah. You can turn it into string, paper, armor, and shapeless. Turns into seeds. You can smelt it into cactus green. It's pretty useful stuff. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, these ores, if you use it without horizons, you'll get these different ores. And horizons, they are turned off because basically that's that's copper uh, that is nickel that's lead emery will still be there because it's used in recipes uh, castrite is tin and bauxite is aluminum so but that's the quick and dirty rundown uh, to help you guys get started uh, the fluids act the same way as the item outputs and inputs and <coughs> extractors and things like that so it's pretty self-explanatory once you get past this guy right here the fact that there's no GUIs uh, but with Wayla you get some information so it's not too bad and it does have its own power generation we'll get into that in another uh, tip video so I uh, hope this helps some people out with what this mod is all about because it's a really awesome mod and we'll get m more in depth into it in future episodes of engineers toolbox with teddy here so until then enjoy everyone